the, the staccato you did, they should be buoyant. They should be buoyant. It's a little more palm, 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 P. Horizontally. Well, the left hand's just rolling. Now, what are you bringing out in the left hand is the moving notes. Remember when you blocked, you knew what came out naturally? So actually what you're hearing is this. Right? Contrary motion. Contrary motion is always attracts the ear. And that's a contrary motion between the hands, right? And if you block it, you still hear the contrary motion. Now, if you, if you detach the notes, you don't want to lose that shape where it's going horizontally. Now, how would you sing it if you did it legato? You would go... Right? So, so see if you can have a singing uh, staccato instead of um, one that's sort of like up and down staccato. Like it's traveling to where? It's traveling to... Tari. Ultimately, that's where its destination is, right? Mm -hmm. So let's try that. Come down with the dead weight scale and lighten up, but have these directional staccatos, more directional, like they're going toward what? M measure 4C. That's where they're going. That's the destination. <laughs> singing tone style, yeah. you know, phrasing, shaping. Good. Now, you already know how to play the second phrase because he's doing a similar thing, but he's, he's harmonically it's different, right? It's starting with dominant, but it's, it's a sequence above, a step above, right? A sequence? Yeah. And it's not an exact sequence because he changes. Bom, 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 right? That's the only thing he changes, right? Because if you look above, he went straight up, right, with E, F, G, A. Mm -hmm. Now he's going F, E, F, G, A. It, it's the same shape. Right. So let's now now shape it the same way the second time. And That's incidentally, perfect. incidentally, the second phrase answers the first phrase and resolves to the tonic. We were left with a semi-cadence here, right? Semi-cadence? Mm -hmm. That's your dominant. Yeah, now he picks up on the dominant, and he will bring us back home to the what? Measure A, the tonic. Yeah, so you have to convey that to the listener, too. Yeah, can you make these, that we hear them? Yeah, it takes a lot of control. Lift the left hand. So we get soft right away, though, on that F. That's a big surprise that you have to suddenly get softer on the F. Wise, you're, you're a little, you hear more of the right hand, and the left hand is underneath that in, in um, six. Are we doing six there? Yeah, we're doing six, are we not? Until here, and it goes bigger. Right, so there, there are a lot of sixths there. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. And then he has a tenth at the end, and he has tenths, so the last two are tenths, right? E, F, E, G over F, A. But it's very consonant harmonies, you know. So there's no dissonances, really. There's no dissonance, right? No dissonance. Are going toward the resolution AF. That's the resolution of what? The, the antecedent and the consequent. You know about those words. The antecedent is the, the question and the consequent is the answer in the, in the tonic. Now, the, another thing you can improve is those GGGs. They could get so use your wrist. Use your wrist for the repeated notes. Wrist, wrist.
make sure your left hand doesn't overshadow yeah, your that's right. Hard. That's tricky. So you have to kind of use little balancing routines or where you have to put your weight a little deeper. Um, you're still soft, but you still have to have, make the left softer mm -hmm. than the right. Now, the next is the second theme, and it's a contrasting theme, right? It's contrasting, it's very rolling kind of. We, we haven't had as much of these rolling figures that are, but he has broken chord rolling, broken chord. The broken chord's have been in the left hand up to now, right? Now he puts the rolling into the right hand, right? Right? I'm just blocking a little bit. I'm using rotation, I see. I'm watching myself. Right, there's a little rotation. Perfect, there you go. And then... Pretty good. Yeah, so see how you to crash sometimes, right? It's easy for the thumb, yeah, at that very last thumb in the right hand, in the right hand. Oh. Yeah, it's very easy for that, the second eighth note to just crash a little too, yeah, too hard. Yeah, and you can always practice by doing a legato here first, going without the ornament first. note but still do legato good now we're, now we're going to do the detachment and you know you leaned a little on that G which you should that's a pagiatura right now but the one the second one is going to be lighter lighter in dynamic actually but still the same duration the same staccato So remember, you have a contrasting theme, so to speak. It's supposed to be a contrasting theme, you know, in a classical sonata or sonatina, and this is a miniature sonata, it means small. Um, you still have a different type of theme that's contrasting. It definitely does, because you're bum, 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 da, 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 bum, 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 suddenly. Right? It's different. It's different than what you started with, which was a bigger, majestic kind of feeling with those big Fs going and the scale and all that stuff. Now you have, and that's like the singer would, would, would slur that that way, right? They wouldn't go, tikka, tikka, dum. We know that. So that's the idea. But this, you know, and you have to take it all the way through the movement because. Yeah. He get, you know, basically spells out what he wants you to do on the first page. And then we do know, but we did last week, we, we learned about those resolutions in these places. And then resolve, right? Da, 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 resolve. You gotta be careful with those, right? You, know, you gotta be really careful with, with places like that. D, lean, resolve. D, so, yeah, you can spot oh, practice. The, uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I was going over to the second page where oh, you know that left hand yeah. and right hand, where, where they, the two hands do the same rhythm. Right. right. Oh, you know, we have to make a big deal. You know, we have to make a big deal. Wait. The B, the B flat, the G minor. The G minor is a big deal there, right? Is that G minor? Yes. Oh, G right. minor. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, you don't want to crash. Well, first of all, it's a surprise that it's, that it's G minor there. As a matter of fact, because if you well, look at the development section, play play the beginning of the development. Let's see what he does harmonically. He's, he starts in F major. Do everything we learned today, but remember what we did today. Now, this is a surprise. That is so beautiful. That 
that is going into C what? Uh, actually, that, that's going to, well, that's a C minor chord, but that becomes the two chord of B flat major because we go into a dominant now, mm -hmm. right? So that's a double identity. It's basically the two chord that goes to the five that goes to B flat major. And then he's going to go to G minor, which is the relative of B flat. Yeah, yeah so he needs a nerve of keys. In it. He uses a lot of devices with modulation. In the, uh, he does rhythmic devices, right? Mm -hmm. Using da da dum, da da dum, borrowing that. Uh, and then he does um, modulations. So we need to know the modulations. Da tum pa ti o, surprise da da right? Okay, this week practice the same business of the dead weight scale and lifting the weight off for the P, the piano. That's a big deal. To practice the dead weight scale. Now it's a little harder in measure 24 because it was easy to go 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? Mm -hmm. But now you've got shifts. 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2. That's harder, isn't it? Yeah. So you gotta know your Remember fingers. Remember your fingering. And in fact, I noticed that he has the first one as a short note and the others as legato notes. So he wants you to do right, right? And in fact, it matches up with what? It matches up with the beginning where he came out of the scale and he started with a short note, right? At the very beginning of the piece. It matches up because that's what he did. He went short. He's doing that same thing now. Is there a, a lot of way to practice like the five fingers, one loud, one soft? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is there hints on that? But you know, I think that uh, now that you're doing the F major scale, as you're, we did it as sort of an introduction, uh, this is only a one octave scale. You can, right? It's going down one octave, mm -hmm. right? And then all through it. Um, you can practice one octave scale up and down, going from descending uh, loud, come up loud and descend soft the second time. So you don't have to keep lifting your hand. So you just do up and down. You can go no. Maybe that's a good idea. No. That won't exactly get you what you want here because he's coming onto a staccato note, right? Yeah. So, you know, you really have to, the technique is built into that passage. I would keep working on this. Yeah. I mean, why do all that when it's right there for you to do? No. You really have to attend to the first one being shorter mm -hmm. and long. But look at the wrist. Why do I do that? Shape the phrases beautifully that way. Right? And I think another really hard thing to do is those repeated Fs because they could get very much stratified into F, 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 B, right? If you play the violin, it would do too if you had a bow bowing this, you know. I probably bow it like. See what I did? I did two up bows and I lightened my up bows on that second mm -hmm. half of the measure. Even though it's it's big, it's just that I have to do something different on the second half of the measure or else it sounds like poke, poke, right? Yeah. And this is very Mozartian, by the way. You see the rotation really helps. What way you're gonna get this? You can see that's the old school of, you know, when you teach people finger technique and they do these redundant exercises for 10,000 hours and they're just, you know, they think they're strengthening their fingers and really just getting injuries because... So the new way of thinking is you think in groups, you use a bigger arm energy, you have a supple wrist, you have energy funneling down your arm, you don't stop the energy here or here, you know, and you learn mm -hmm. fluidity.